It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Graham, we've got the Secretary of State of the great state of Arkansas, Mr. Mark Martin, is on the line. Mark, welcome back to the program, sir. Good morning, Paul. Uh, good morning to you. So, how have you been? Um, how how did, how's filing been? I mean, I know that's uh, been the key topic of the Capitol right now. Everybody's filing to run for office. How'd that go this week? Pretty good. I think the main topic that a lot of people had was whether or not I was actually going to file to run for anything. I think they believed me now when I told them I wasn't. I was done with this for a while. Well, you know, when a politician. <laughs> And see, most politicians are not like you, Mark. Most politicians love the power, and they, they and it becomes their identity. Their identity is whatever office they hold. I know you. That's not you. So when you say that you're not running, you're not running. <laughs> well, and I mean, there might have been some things that could have changed my mind about it, but you know what? You you, you listen to the the good Lord, and if he say, if say no, you just go with no, and you'll be safe about it. Okay. All right. Um. So. I want to get your thoughts on something um, that I guess it's interesting. You know, we have Arkansas works being debated. They're going to try to fund this thing again. They got to have 75%. Of course, before it was Arkansas works, it was the private option. It all operates under the umbrella of Obamacare and the individual mandate. And I know you've been against this thing from day one, but I, I'm just curious. I mean, has anything happened that has changed your mind from where we were versus where we are now just depends on what you mean change my mind change my mind being against it uh uh in a, a big way or just plain old against it extremely because i've gotten it's only uh the stuff that's come out only affirmed my reasons for being against it so you're saying where we were versus where we are now, you're even more against it than you were when you first started being against this uh, concept of uh, Medicaid expansion. That's true because, I mean, the conservatives, what the warnings that conservatives were putting there were being met with what seemed like reasonable things that might could work out if everything happened right. So, you know, you get the benefit of the doubt, even though you know it's probably wrong. And then when you look at it at a philosophical level, you know that transferring what might be good for Arkansas to our children's debt in the future from a federal level, there was no way around that. That was the basic reason why we should have all been against it to start with, because just because we have a few more cash dollars rolling into Arkansas for a short period of time up front doesn't mean that we could saddle, should saddle our children with federal debt. I mean, it's robbing Peter to pay Paul, and the only problem is you have to pay Paul back, back two or three times what you robbed Peter for. So, I mean, everybody knew that that was the situation, but they thought, well, it'd be good for Arkansas, we got to get ours. And you cut some people some benefit of the doubt, thinking, hey, you know, it's probably not a good idea, but now we're coming to find out that it's even worse than that, that the money that's actually rolling back into Arkansas as this moves forward is going to be more even – and then what was originally estimated, this balloon payment that we're going to be facing. So I don't know how much longer that the, the, the state of Arkansas can kind of kick that can down the road. We may, we may be able to get past the next four years mm -hmm. without it just absolutely destroying the budget. Of course, you know, governors are pretty good at kicking cannons down the road and leaving the next governor sitting high and dry. So, yeah. you know, it would only it, it only makes sense to me that those people that are actually in line to, to be the governor the next time would uh, – not want this dropped in their lap right no yeah you're exactly right about that we're talking with secretary of state mark martin about arkansas works obamacare hey mark let me ask you this because you know arkansas is the only state to have done this i mean and, and we're and i think we're the only state that has messed it up to such a degree with our innovative idea to give the money to insurance companies um and you know the republicans I, you know, I'd say that they couldn't have done it, but they did do what they did. I, I will say, you know, they ran against the establishment Republicans even ran against Medicaid expansion back in 2012. And then in 2013, they they expanded Medicaid, but they did it in a different way. And if they would have just done it the traditional way, I still would have been against it, meaning what Obama wanted everybody to do was just to expand the existing Medicaid program and put every, the new population into that. But if you did it that way, right? You, you 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 don't get Blue Cross Blue Shield doesn't get this guaranteed taxpayer revenue source every single month. And so kind of in hindsight, I'm thinking, 
I, you know, it's hard for me not to think that this whole thing was a uh, really a you know just carefully crafted. Almost, it's just like a you know conspiratorial. It's like okay, well, we're the only state that some that did what we did, and we're also the only state that really had this huge Republican wave of candidates that came in office saying they weren't going to do the traditional Medicaid, and so the the lobbyists and the special interests come in and say, well, we're going to figure out a way for them to you know send all this money to insurance companies. I, I just it's a very um, you know, very weird, weird situation. I don't think weird really describes it, but what are your thoughts on that? Oh, it's a very complex thing going on that, that occurred there. You know, one of the things is, is a lot of Republicans really don't get the, the fact that uh, just because we're for capitalism doesn't mean we're for crony capitalism. And then I think that the, way, the reason it seems to correspond with the wave is not so much that there's some nefarious goings on there. It's we had a bunch of Republicans come into office that really never had to either survive under the Democrats and the, and the tough fight that we had to do to, get to to maintain a conservative viewpoint, right? But they also never were and had no experience or no tradition of actually governing. So the first thing that come down the pipeline that allowed them to actually move something forward governing, right? But had enough of window dressing to stab the conscience, they were willing to grab onto. I mean, I, I think it comes from a wave of a bunch of new legislators being unsophisticated enough to not be able to notice what's going to happen and what the tricks are that's being played in the system. Yeah. There were some people that knew, and there were some people that tried to sound the alarm, you know. Um, oh, yeah. You know, you had, at the time... Well, yeah, we just played Tim Griffin back in 2014, but that was a year afterwards. And I, I'm pretty sure he was against it before that. Congressman Rick Crawford oh, came I, out with a statement of, it, of being against it. And then then State Representative Bruce Westerman, now Congressman Bruce Westerman, had his famous— I was famous, about to bring that one up. Yeah, go ahead. Talk about that. Well, no, I was just fixing to say there was one person that had the intellect and the sophistication to really actually sit down— and from a friendly standpoint, and from a, starting from a positive standpoint, listen to what everybody had to say. And then when it started falling out, you remember what he had to say. It was the 30 pieces of silver statement. And that was no accident. And I know that that was a bombshell. But it really, really should have solidified what everybody was thinking. Whenever a guy with the intellect and just the kind demeanor of Representative Westerman, makes a statement like that, then it should have rattled every single other legislature to stop and think what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> You're exactly right. You, do you, Hey, let me ask you this. Uh, I think, I think recording, uh, in committees and recording the house, uh, is a good thing for the constituents and everything else, transparency. But do you know that that speech that Bruce Westerman gave, on the private option and how not to and why they shouldn't implement it and do not trade your vote for 30 pieces of silver. He said that. And, of course, that is verified now because Richard Womack said after the fact that he was offered a bribe to vote for the private option. State Representative Womack has said lobbyists offered him a bribe. So Bruce Westerman was right in saying don't trade your vote for 30 pieces of silver. But do you know that that speech was used as a justification to not put cameras in the Arkansas Senate chamber because we don't need this to become, we don't need this to become, you know, theater and the showboating. They thought Bruce Westerman was showboating when in reality he was just telling the truth. Yeah, I mean, the Senate's always been resistive to any kind of, uh, of accountability. It's the nature of the, of the chamber. I think it's that way all over the United States because they're less accountable to voters. They got a longer time period between times that they have to be up for election. So the natural outlay of that is what you see there. And, I mean, we see it happen all the time with our federal Senate, too. So, I mean, I find that rather unsurprising that uh, that was going on. Now, you know, one of the things about it that's kind of interesting is everybody thinks you know, the first thing that your mind goes to is taking a bribe and stuff like that. You know, there's, uh, there's tons of other ways that are all perfectly legal, that this money flowed, whether or not it was promises for jobs afterwards or other things like that. I mean, it wasn't just flat out 
stacks of money in pie boxes, right? Right. I mean, there was tons, tons and tons and tons of other ways that people benefited personally from uh, voting a certain way. Right. Of course, you know, from an ethical standpoint, that's just as wrong. From a legal standpoint, there, there's nobody to charge on this stuff. Right. Right. Well, I mean, you look at Michael Lamoureux. I mean, he was, I mean, I don't know why the lobbyists felt compelled to donate all that money to the Faith and Freedom Coalition, 140000 and then he got a $120,000 payment. That was all legal, right? Because it technically it went through his law practice and, you know, he's an attorney and everything else. So, I mean, we have examples of exactly what you're talking about. Well, and of course, I wasn't even thinking of that one there. I, that's kind of new to me. I, I must have missed the, that piece of paper. But yes, I mean, exactly those sort of situations. Um, I've been in different, various places of government, jobs in different places in the industry. You've seen a lot of them fall out there, really. You say, hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's all you can do. Yeah. Well, hey, let me encourage you, Secretary of State Mark Martin, if you ever want, do want to get back into office, you want to take a break, I, I get that. Uh, you've done a great job as Secretary of State. Uh, you have uh, been able, real quick before we go, you've been able to make improvements uh, to the Capitol grounds there, uh, some structural improvements that had been neglected for a long time, and you ended up doing it um, you know, within the budget or under budget. I mean, you, you saved a lot of money out of your office, is that right? Yeah, that's uh, our actual budget over the eight years have been essentially baseline with the exception of the COLA increases that went to employees the governor actually does. So that goes into our pay baseline budget. But within our baseline budget, we've actually had a zero baseline. Um, and with that, we have actually done somewhere close to $20 million with, with a couple of grants on either the building or the um, – uh, purchasing election equipment. We've done that without additional appropriations for the legislature. Those were all budget items that were supposed to be funded by the legislature. We've done it with budget cuts within our office. Mm. Um, that means that now what used to be supplemental appropriations is actually being done out of the M&O of the Secretary of State's office, which is a huge transformation. It's probably equivalent to about a 25% budget, budget cut over the long term of the office. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, there's more than that. We've gone from, you know, depending on uh, which numbers you want to look at during, before I took office, they had as many as or more than 226 full-time equivalent employees in the Arkansas Secretary of State's office. We're down to around 136, 138, depending on what time we set. So even though, I mean, there's tons of money that's associated with that that, that will, for generations, um, uh, be essential cuts because all of the employment benefits division uh, benefits that actually would go to a large workforce is now coming off of off budget items. This is stuff that I don't even get credit for. It's a cut to the state budget because we don't have as many employees for long term. Um, yeah, um, liabilities. Yeah, well, that's really good. So I mean, really, what we've got is we've got a huge budget cut to Secretary of State's office overall. Um, and if you just look at the pure baseline numbers as far as the accounting of the, uh, notice, of the DFNA, folks, it's a flat. <laughs> just notice, Mark, I think the audiences would not disagree with me here. Listen to how excited he is about telling you about <laughs> huge budget creases in my office. Like, you're a true conservative, Mark, so I want to encourage you to, when you, when you take your time off, your, uh, your state needs you again. Uh, and you need, to, you need to throw your hat back in the ring, ring at some point. And I really appreciate you coming on the program, Mark. Well, it might be a while, but uh, honest men don't get rich in politics, so i got to go back out and get some money, make some money some other way. There, there you go. Also another indicator you need to run for office again. <laughs> honest men do not get rich in politics. All right, best of luck to you, Mark. I appreciate it. Okay, thanks uh, a lot. Secretary of State Mark Martin, everybody. We're going to take a break. Hey, when we come back, I'm going to 